welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. I'm Kevin. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Today's video is going to be a wrap and chat. We have not wrapped anything yet. No, not at all. So we are going to spend the next 30 minutes with you guys wrapping everything that we can and answering as many questions as possible. We put all of the questions that you guys asked in a bowl. So we're just going to randomly pick them and answer while we wrap our gifts. This video is a collaboration with Abby and her husband, John from Root and Rest. So when you get done wrapping and chatting with us, head over to her channel and wrap and chat with her because that will give you almost a whole hour of wrapping and chatting. So we'll keep you company this season. No doubt. You ready, ready to start wrapping? Ready. All right. All right. Let's I'm gonna, make some room. All right. Let's make some room. No, oh, and you already got the first question. You're I ready do. to go. I all do. All right. Why aren't even waiting on me? I'll take them. I'll do the next question. And okay. Go back and forth. How about that? All right. Let's get some wrapping paper. What color would you like on this one? Uh, whatever you pick. Okay. All right. So our first question is, how did you and your husband meet? I'll let you take that one. <laughs> <laughs> so we... Um, in previous lives, well, I, in a previous life, was a full-time photographer, and as most of you probably know, he is an artist, and he wanted to do a piece of work, like an art piece, based off of one of my photos, and so he had to obviously, you know, legally have all hey, the... Let me get that? Yeah. Go he ahead. had to have all of the legal stuff for, like, the copyright release, um, and so we started working together on a regular basis. And we had a ton of stuff in common. Uh, neither of us, I say neither of us, I'm pretty sure I wasn't. Were you looking for a relationship? No, not at all. No. Not at the time. He had just recently lost his wife to cancer. I had just gone through a divorce or was going through a divorce. And so we were just kind of hanging out, like doing work together. We had a lot in common. Uh, so we started doing like all of the things together that you want to don't want to do by yourself. Go to dinner. Um, go see a movie. We went to a movie together. Yep, we were yep, just, yep. just kind of hanging out. Um, and then six months later we got married. <laughs> That's kind of how that went. That's exactly how that went. Um, and I went and changed it. We've been together 10 years. We were surprised when we fell in love. We were surprised in the timeline we got married and we were surprised with the child. So yeah, when they say it's meant to be, sometimes <laughs> it's meant to be. Yep. Yeah, with us, it definitely was. Um, it was against everything that we said we wanted and Yet, I wouldn't have it any other way. So, there's that. There's that. All right, you want to answer the next one? Sure, let's see what we have in here. Oh. Did you always know you would homeschool? If not, when and why did you make that decision? Let's see. I was working at the time. We definitely did not always no. know we would homeschool. Like no. we for sure thought, in fact, um, when we bought this house, Emily was like 18 months old and yep. we didn't move into the greatest school district or the school that she would go to was not the greatest. And we were hesitant to buy this house because of that. And with my, my work schedule and I was working like a county over, that's not an option for moving her back and forth to school, back to home, but, and that kind of stuff. So, But my stepmom worked at a magnet school, which ensured, it guaranteed Emily entrance into it. Yes. So we bought this house knowing that she could go to a different school. So like we had every intention of sending her to school. Um, but with that being said, she was a preemie and she was rather small and her birth date where it fell in the year. It kind of um, put her right in that it could go either way. Yeah. So we initially said, okay, well, we're going to hold her a year and so that she would start um, preschool the following year. But around here, preschool is only like three hour days. Yeah. And we live about 45 minutes to an from hour anything. from the nearest, from <laughs> anything, but from anything. the nearest preschool. So it was kind of like, honestly, you guys, I'm not a morning person. I wasn't ready to like go. I didn't want... Uh, I don't know. I just didn't want to have to let go. I didn't want to send her to school for a few hours. And so I talked him into it. I was like, you know, it's just ABCs and one, two, three. Like, come on, it's preschool. They're just going to play. Anybody can do it. So you agreed to yes. preschool. Yes. I, well, my thing was I agreed <laughs> and said we would go through it and we would revisit it 
after a while and see how things were going. And honestly, have we ever revisited it? No, <laughs> not at all. This has kind of been like a, this is what works for us. Yes. But we did agree that we would revisit it. We did. We did. We just haven't. <laughs> Do you want to pull another question for me? Sure, I can do that. Let's see. Oh, do you wrap what goes in the stockings? That's a good question. Um, no, we only wrap the gifts that are from us mm -hmm. that fit under the tree. So if they're not from us, they don't get wrapped. And if they do not fit under the tree, like let's say um, a bicycle. Yeah. A it wouldn't get, yeah, like it would yeah. just get a bow. Like it would just, we would just buy a really big bow and yes. stick it on it. Cause I ain't got time for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the way I've always done it all my life was you wrapped everything. Basically you picked a day and a time and you got everything, all your things on your list together. You took time, you wrapped them. And then I'm talking about presents for uncles and aunts and kind of like we're doing today but yes. today we're doing it with new, new right. friends and family that's right <laughs> and then we would stick that all up under the tree pack it all in it looks impressive it's beautiful and then each christmas party you go to you just slowly doing it <laughs> you down slowly yep that's and clean exactly it up so it quits spreading across the living room yeah yep exactly okay that one's done okay now i'm gonna set this under the tree all right there we go let's go find another one um, let's try a different paper. All right, I want to wrap these two in the same because they're to the same, and then these two in the same. Okay. It can all be in red, but I just want them to match so I don't forget. All right, and I'm <clears> going <throat> to go ahead and pull another question. Okay. Oh, I have my own scissors on that. I'm sorry. I no, it's, no, it's perfectly <laughs> fine by me. Same household, same scissors. Let's see. Have you ever considered putting your child back in school? Or would you consider um, due to finances? Mm. So that that's <laughs> difficult. I, I don't want to tell. I like I don't want anybody to feel like we're telling them what to do. But so I'm going to speak from what we personally. There has been times um, that I mean, obviously, we both work from home um, and running a company and. There is a lot that could potentially happen. Um, oh, anything. I mean, anything change. can happen. Anything can change. Yeah. So this is definitely something we've discussed, and the the short answer is no, we would not. But only because we have a lot of friends and family and systems in place that we could still work and count on and be and, able to go to work and, and still be able to homeschool. Like, and I would. I would I wouldn't say Emily can't go to public school. I mean, that's if that was what was best for her, that's a bridge we would cross when we get there. But if it was just because of finances, public school would not be the answer because of finances. Like, we would work mm -hmm. opposite schedules. Yeah, we have think. grandparents that would help. That wouldn't be a deciding factor for us, I guess is what we're trying to say. And I've, both, I've worked both local and over the road. Um, so making that sacrifice is something our family's used to in the past. It's wonderful that we don't have to do that in any, at this time or anymore. But if it came back to it, um, we would do what we had to do um, and what was best for us and her at the same time. So it, I, it, I feel really confident. I do too. That, and I think, I mean, like I said, we have, even if we both had to go back full time, we have grandparents who would help and we've homeschooled in yes. such a way that we know that you only need a few hours a day to get things accomplished and in our situation with her age and everything um and where we're at with her it i think she could handle it if if we had to do some type of schooling where she was with the grandparents we could lay it out she she's knows old enough that she plan. could be somewhat independent i mean the, it might be different if she had been four like if we were having this discussion and she was four years old for sure totally different because yes. she could yes. definitely handle i mean i can make a to-do list and she could get quite a bit of things done so he's right that is definitely part of it i think i think yes. so too <laughs> i can get quite a few out of this one all right isn't that funny the things that excite you when you're an adult yeah, like when the when, paper? and when the scissors slide, oh, like yeah, all yeah, of the yeah, things yeah. that get you so excited, yeah, like yeah. that was not something. I that even would've... bought a new sharpener just so I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He sharpened my scissors. Wait, what did I just do? That does not fit that. 
That's pretty cool. That's one side. One you side. You totally just let me cut you that. Meant, you meant to use this one. Wait, I think, will this no. fit this? But wait, let's see if it'll fit this. No. Maybe. It might. All right. It might. That's pretty But close. I'm going to get confused. We need to save that. Okay. Let's wrap this first. It I can't believe looking. you let me do that. I know, right? It was all my fault. Oh, goodness. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I can't multitask. Oh, there's one sneaking on the floor to make sure we haven't already done this one. We have not. I don't think I can wrap and talk. That's all right. I can't. I can't talk. So. How do you? This has got to be for you. How much? How do you have so much energy and positivity in doing all the things? Okay. First of all, I don't. Like, I'm just gonna be honest. I don't. What you see is energy and positivity because I am not ever gonna post myself laying in the bed in pajamas like all day long, because who wants to see that? I mean, if you want to see it, let me know and I'll post it. But I would imagine y'all don't want to see, you know, me laying in bed, vegging out, watching Netflix. Um, but I will say that I am positive and energetic because I have a lot of help. Um, and because I really honestly love a, like 99% of everything I do. I love homeschooling. I love creating resources. Um, I love being, you know, here with you guys. Like, I love everything about it. So, that helps. All right, let's see what we got here. Hmm, interesting question. Have you seen a change in Florida because the influx of people moving here? Uh, honestly, especially this time of year, no. I don't think anything really feels any different. Um... We have a saying we kind of laugh about. While other states have the changing of the <laughs> colors on the leaves on the tree, Florida, this time of year, we have the color change in the tags coming to Florida. That's true. Um, it's, We're used to it being busier this time of year anyway because of the influx been, of snowbirds. This year, is, the temperatures have even been higher than what I would suspect they've been in a long time. We Which were means having that there's high been 70s even more. and 80s. We've been going to the park, the beach. And that means everybody else wants to go join that and have fun with that too. So, yeah, I would say not really. It's that time of year. We expect an influx of people. So, yeah, I don't think it feels any busier here than usual. Um, no busier than like when it just happens to be, like you said, winter or summer and you get used to it. Yeah, they'll say that we have a slow season on the beach, but like like I'm saying, right now with the warmer temperatures, and, and we just went and ate on the beach the other day. And, yeah, and it uh, wasn't. It was we didn't even wait, and we packed. didn't even wait for a table. I mean, it yeah. was busy, but we didn't wait. Yeah. So that was nice. All right, there's part one of that, oh, and let's see. Part one. Part one. Oh yeah, let me put a number on hers. All right. Too. Do you want another red? You want to change it up a little bit and do a green wrap, or what do you want? No, to? let's do red for this so they match. Okay. And uh, then we can change papers. That gives another roll. Because you know I can't not match. I know this. Aesthetically, it's not. Mm -hmm. Emily likes to do a sock of this color and a sock of that color. You want to cut that one for me? Hand me a I'm question. Gonna, I'll get, read. I'll get you a question and. You cut. <laughs> I hate you cutting. wanted to read. <laughs> oh, this question is for you. Uh oh. Are more kids in your future? You want to give the short answer to that? Absolutely, one hundred percent, equivocally, no. So, if you don't know the story, um, Emily wasn't planned. I was told in a previous life that I couldn't have kids. She was a total surprise, um, and then was the absolute. Worst pregnancy that you can ever have. It was scary. And he, they weren't sure that either of us were going to make it. Yeah, we, we so, talked about it, and yeah, it was bad. We weren't sure if either one of them were going to make it. And when it was all said and done, it was adamant by well, family members, myself. It, I maybe was not told her. it wasn't an option. Yeah, we all made the decision for her. They did. And then I went to multiple doctors to try to see if there was a way that we could basically make sure that it it wouldn't happen again that I could, you know, and have a pregnancy there's and there's not, there's no way to ensure that what happened with her wouldn't happen again. So we did just decide that it was best for her, uh, that she have a mom and not a sibling. So yes. that's where we ended up. Yeah. I kind of liken to the fact that she's just one of those perfect accidents and 
it was it's a beautiful thing she's like what i would have picked if i could have ordered that out of the catalog <laughs> she really is but i'm afraid if i ordered again i would not get the same package and and you know it's funny she doesn't want like if you were to have asked her that same question she would have given you a resounding absolutely not she likes being an only child mm -hmm. she doesn't want a sibling um so it's a no from all of us no more kids in our future sorry we'll be an only child homeschool for but then again if it had been a great pregnancy then i say this with confidence if it had been a great pregnancy we would have definitely had else, more especially knowing then what i know now we would have had uh, more. yeah definitely i wanted a football team like i literally wanted to be like the little old lady in the shoe and have like a whole herd of children originally but i'm content and happy with what i was given i got my girl yes you did. that was a funny story in itself the she boy was who was gonna wear pink yeah she was supposed to be a boy and I told her, I said, well, it's a girl. And she goes, but the doctor said it's a boy. I said, it's a girl. And he told goes, me if it wasn't, we were putting it back. Yeah, I said, bye. And we nothing bought but nothing pink. but pink. And she goes, but what if it's a boy? I said, it's not. It's a girl. And it better be a girl. And it was a girl. He was right. Luckily for her sake. <laughs> Luckily for my sake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, you want to give me green paper before we answer that one? Yes, I will. Oh, that's a good one. What well, are both of us? What? Chance. Yeah. What are each of your favorite Christmas traditions? So, what's your favorite Christmas tradition? Mine would be cooking, um, the Christmas dinner. The oh, that is kind of like your you name. know what I mean. I mean, yeah. I love to cook anyway, but that's something that I can remember fondly. Um, growing up was when the grandparents and the parents and uncles and everybody got together and everybody brought dishes and. You just had, it was, it was just big. It was big. Okay. Short people problem. Okay. I can't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while you finish cutting that, oh, wait my you favorite. You to say I complete you. Oh, you do complete me. You totally complete me. Am I short behind? My favorite Christmas tradition um, is funny because yours is something you remember fondly as yourself as a kid. And so is mine. And it's going to look at Christmas lights. I have many memories um of my mom driving us through well i mean in years we couldn't afford it we made our own but then when we could afford it driving through dunkin donuts and getting um like hot chocolate and then just randomly driving around looking at christmas lights it was never quite as planned as what we do now where we go looking you know for specific lights it was definitely more spur of the moment and it was whatever neighborhoods had available is what we went and looked at and we didn't know any different and we thought it was amazing as kids but we would we would wear christmas pajamas and we would put you know hot chocolate in a cup and we would just go drive around and we would holler out lights on my side lights on my side the whole time we were driving um and now we do that with emily although we say lights on the left and lights on the right because she gets easily confused <laughs> and it helps her make sure that we're you know reviewing which side is left and which side is right so that's my favorite christmas memory and tradition that we still do now I like the fact that times have changed and you have like smart devices and all that um, and ways for people to tell you about lights in their area and um, it gives you more opportunity to see some mega displays. Oh, you mean like the ones where the lights are synced to music because those are your favorite? You think those, those are my favorite. Absolutely, <laughs> bar none. You when, like music. When the people dress it all on top of the house and all the way around the house, <laughs> and they got the music blaring and everything's dead, the lights are dancing. That's, that's my favorite. You mean like the house that had over 150 inflatables that I thought was gaudy and you absolutely loved? Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be the old man with every inflatable known to man. I'll start in July and put it all up and... It'll probably be February, March before I get it all packed back up. And are are we going to be living in separate houses at that point? No. Like, okay. Okay. I don't know about all that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love Christmas. Yeah. Okay, you can start in July outside if you let me start in July inside. Christmas in July through December? I can get behind that. And we already did that. No. Two, it was, years, two years ago. It was November. It was early November, but it was November. I promise it was. <laughs> what color do you want? A red one? Um, whatever. Surprise me. Oh, we have red, silver, and green. <laughs> That's surprise! Not much, <laughs> not much of a surprise then, is it? Nah. You know, I'm waiting for me to forget what I wrapped and who it's to, because that's inevitable. You know what that means? 
You Surprise! get to open it and rewrap it. No, I open it and you rewrap it. No, 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 no. Yeah, I get I to open so. it. No, I don't think All so. All right, you ready for another one? Sure. Let's see. Da, da, da. And the winner is... What have you learned to most appreciate, appreciate about each other in the recent years? Oh. Put that on the tree. Under the I'll tree. give you a second to think. <laughs> oh, I got this. Oh, well then you can go first. Oh, what, have right, you, what have you learned to appreciate about me? Um, well, the fact that I'm standing here and I'm not packed off to bed, knowing I have to get up at 4.30 in the morning, and I don't know if y'all can hear it right now, but outside it is pouring cats and dogs. It really is. I don't have to go out in that to go to work every day. Um, so I'm going to say that I appreciate your skills and abilities and the beautiful mind you have and the fact that what I help support you do by saying go for Grew it. Grew into something that we could do together. That we're now doing together, meaning I get to That's... do my artwork, but I don't have to go outside the house to do work. Um, so I get more time with my daughter. I get to raise my daughter, which is uh, amazing in itself. Because you think about it, and I'll say it time and time again. If you're a mother and you're able to raise your kids and you're in the house with them, whether they go to brick and mortar or their homeschool, if you're spending time and raising them, you get a different experience. If you're the father that stays home and raises them, you get that different experience. But you get to enjoy all of the get, things. There's so much you miss. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the little things. They can have pictures colored for you. They can tell you about their day. And it's wonderful, no doubt. And you look forward to it. But it's not the same as being there in the morning. No. Lunch time. Dinner time. No, it's not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what I appreciate. So you appreciate the fact that I'm an entrepreneur? Yes. Okay. So can you remember that next time I'm like knee deep in a project? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... I think the thing that I appreciate about you most, especially in recent years, um, and this is probably because I have been building a business and you've been so supportive, but it's that you seem to know what I need even before I know I need it. So that could be um, that I have a headache and maybe I haven't eaten well enough, so it's you making me lunch. I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, this will this make you feel better, and I didn't even know that that's what I needed. Um, or that I'm super duper stressed out because I haven't left the computer in three days, and it's hey, let's go for a walk because I just need to get away or I need some vitamin D. Yeah, sometimes um, you need to detox. You do. Or it's planning a vacation because we all need time together. It seems that especially, not that you weren't supportive or didn't know what I needed before because you kind of always have, but it definitely seems like in the past few years um, it's become something that I've grown very dependent on. <laughs> like It's been really nice to have that. So you want to grab a present from your side this time? Yeah, I've been eyeballing this one anyway. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. I found it at Sam's the other day, and I picked one up for, like, every kid we know. It's a worry monster. It includes a storybook and a soft toy, and the soft toy eats your worries. Isn't that cute? That's cute. Don't you want him to eat your worries? I don't have any worries right now. Well, if you had any, wouldn't you want him to eat to your worries? Monster. Okay, so we'll have one. You Fair can enough. have him. Yeah, okay. he can eat your worries. You know what would be appropriate for a monster? That eats worries. What? Brown paper. Okay, that would be a problem. <laughs> All right. He can, have, he can have brown worry brown monster paper. paper. Let's make sure he he's, he's the star of the show, but then we're going to wrap him in brown. Okay. Actually, my favorite packages are always brown butcher paper and twine. Really? Yes. It's just something organic and natural about it. You ready? You ready? Oh, these are short. You got it? Yeah, because this paper is shorter than the other. I can read. <laughs> you growed an inch. <laughs> Did you just say I growed an inch? Yeah, growed an inch. And this is why you don't teach language arts. <laughs> All right, you want to grab another question? Yeah, I can do that. I feel like a guinea pig. You are a guinea pig. Guinea pig. That way, if I don't want to answer it, I'm just going to be like, I didn't see that question. Hmm. Top favorite one-day attractions in Central Florida, mm, say around Daytona, Orlando. Oh. I got one. Okay. Sanford Zoo. Oh, that's actually called the Central Florida. That's like, look, 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 
between. It is. is. It, that literally oh, that is. That you did get that okay. is between the two. Although if you're looking it up, it is called the Central Florida Zoo. It is in Sanford, Florida. Um, yes, it is. Oh, we need packing tape. Remember, this tape doesn't hold this this paper. Okay, but you know what that. I means. know. Sorry, you guys. It's gonna be really loud. Nope, I apologize. Actually, I'm on a roll. Oh, it's, it's still, still loud. loud. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to cut that piece off first. Do do not stick it to me. I won't do it. I (laughs) thought about it. You see me looking. I did. This is awkward. It is. Ooh, this tape is interesting. Maybe it'll hold. Maybe it won't. No, it'll hold. It's just not purred. Eh, whatever. Okay. Yeah, see? It folded in. Okay, so that's your top attraction. That Mm -hmm. was really good. Mine in Orlando would be the Crayola Experience. Okay, that was a good one. I really, really enjoyed that one. They're like Edward Tape Hands. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm going to make a movie about you. I'm sticky. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, get another question because we're starting to run short on time. We're not going to be able to answer them anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Hurry up. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, hurry up. Hurry up. So many questions, so little time. <laughs> Were either of you homeschooled? No. No, I was in a cave. And we <laughs> <laughs> no, we both went to public school for our entire educational career. Yeah, I did. Mine was just when it was one school room in the prairie. No, you yeah, was when pterodactyls drove you to school. And pterodactyls were flying over here, yeah. Which is hilarious. Yeah. Okay, I need a green bow and then another question. Man, if I was homeschooled, that'd been the blind leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why? Oh, because your parents? Yeah. I was like, wait Ooh. a minute. Love my parents, but Lord have mercy. They would have done the gazentas, two gazentas, four, two oh, times. Oh, stop and read the question. What would you have done differently in homeschooling if you could go back and do it all over from mm-hmm. where you're at? Right? Okay, I'll answer that if you get me a present and pack paper. Okay. If I could go back. What color paper? I don't care. If I could go back and do it all over again, the thing I think I would do differently would be um, to go easier from the beginning. So in preschool, I was really, really relaxed with Emily and we had the time of our life. In kindergarten, it felt like things got serious. And when things got serious, because it was kindergarten, at least it felt like, um, I did what I thought I had to do or what I should do, which means I started with curriculum and um, resources and just all of like the things that you think you have to use, right? Like we had a math curriculum, we had a language arts curriculum, we had a phonics curriculum, we had just all the things. And it was stressful and it was too much and yeah, we quit man. having fun. Not only that, but think, remember what the downstairs looked like? Oh yeah, it looks like a little, little it was school. A pre, it was like a preschool. School. We, had, we had the numbers on the walls. Everything was bright rainbow colors. And Hey, I still like the rainbows, but anyway. Um, it and, looked like a school. And so I would have, honestly, I wouldn't have, I would have been easier from the beginning. Like I would have homeschooled then the way we homeschool now. More relaxed, um, using games, strewing, uh, not necessarily using, you know, curriculum the way it's written, doing things myself. That, that's that's why they have. say hindsight's always 20 Yeah, I would have done with the way it, we do it now, I feel like. Is there anything you would change? Hmm. I don't know. I think I wouldn't have made the mistakes to push so hard um, for <laughs> proof. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. So part of the reason why we were so stringent in kindergarten is That's because you want not all of it. It was both of us. I was insecure. I didn't have the confidence in myself, so I felt like I needed more guidance. Um, and you feel like you got to prove something. Um, and Kevin wanted. Like, he would come home from work and he wanted to see a stack of papers. Like, what did you do today? I need to see it. And it only counted if it was papers. Well, military-wise, accountability. I wanted accountability. I wanted to know that we were crossing our T's and dotting our I's. Because ultimately, you're responsible for a little person's well-being, their knowledge, their future. I mean, there's it just it's a snowball. And it just keeps growing. And you have to keep pumping stuff into it and building it and making it. And it's like you're afraid you're going to fail or you're going to forget a piece, like a piece of a puzzle, and it's just not complete without it. And then you, like for homeschooling, we you send a letter of intent. Mm-hmm. And that makes it real, and it makes it serious. And then you go, what color do you want? Silver. 
Okay. And then, so you've done that. And so at the end of the day, you're looking towards the end of the year and you're saying, okay, have I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish? And then they're talking about, okay, well, we're going to do a review. We're going to have somebody look at evaluation, what Evaluation, which sounds really fancy. Yeah, it sounds But you know what? If you're in Florida like. and you're worried about it, let me just go ahead and ease your worries. Your evaluation is honestly just to prove progress. That's it. All you have to do is show proof of progress. They don't care what grade level your kid is in. They just want to know that your child has progressed from last year to this year, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. That's it. That's all they want to know. And as long as you're progressing and moving forward, then you're doing good. Then you've met the ob You've met the obligation. obligations. I mean, you you as the parent are going to take it further, of course. And you're going to yeah. you're going to want the uh, most for your child. But that's but what, what have we but what have we learned about gaps? They're going to happen. They're going to. Nobody can yeah. ever learn everything. You're how old and don't know everything? I know quite a bit. Though. You do know Useless. quite a bit, but you don't know everything. <laughs> Okay, I think we have probably just about hit our 30 minutes, but we will do one, one more, more question. I actually close your eyes and you pick. This is so much pressure. Okay. Okay, and the winner <laughs> is... Let's see what we got here. Oh, how close do you and Abby live to each other? Good question. So, Abby lives on the coast of Florida, and we live kind of in the middle of the state. Um, it is about three, I'm not really good with geography. Yeah, like I said probably about three or four three hours. Three to four apart. hours. Um, but neither of us have ever been to each other's hometown. So we no, normally we normally meet in locations that things are going on in between us. So Daytona, Orlando, you know, somewhere in that area. And we just kind of hang out and do stuff. It used to always be Disney, but neither of us have Disney passes right now. Um, so we're going to have to come up with something different. Thanks. I always appreciate it when Throw you anticipate my needs. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, what color bow you want on that? Mm, let's do a green one. Okay. All right, you guys. Thank you for rapping and chatting with us. And we, we hope y'all have a very, very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We do. Happy holidays. Happy whatever holidays, you celebrate. Whatever you celebrate. We hope you enjoy. We hope you had fun rapping with us. Um, if there was a question that you really wanted or needed answered and we didn't get to your question leave it in the comments and i will try to answer a few more in the comments before the holidays and again don't forget to head over to abby's channel so that you can get a little bit more wrapping and chatting done with her